the beautiful subject, the necessity of decision. I trust our study will reveal to each and every one of us that truly you can use the power of decision to change your life if it needs changing, to heal that which needs to be healed, to find a joy and a happiness within yourself, especially if your pathway up to this moment has been insecure. In religious science, we believe there is one life that is within us all, and we've come from one source. We believe that life is God. And if that life is perfect, if that is our life now, there's a perfection within each and every one of us. Regardless how imperfect life might appear to you, you have the potential, the capacity of bringing in more of a greater perfection than you ever dreamed of. Now, I know this seems to be a very idealistic statement, doesn't it? That there is a perfection within you that you can turn to, that can change your life from darkness to light. Because isn't it true we do participate in so many forms of suffering, fear, worry, and misunderstanding? Today, so many people are praying to God to do this and to do that for them, completely unaware that the power to accomplish that which they desire rests solely within themselves at all times. It cannot be. You know, Jesus was one who spoke with authority and great decision, didn't he? didn't take him a moment to speak a new word. Why? Because if you recall, he said, the words I speak to you, I speak them not of myself, but I speak them from the Father who dwelleth within. I wonder how many words we speak from the Father who dwelleth within. So our word can be spoken with such an authority that there's a reaction instantly. That's your possibility. Now, we're gathered here of various faiths, and this is wonderful. It is good, because this denotes that regardless of our religious background, we are searching for the same thing. We're searching for an understanding of that which is greater. That's something that will set us free from so many of the burdens we participate in. We seek that truth not only for ourselves, too, isn't it true? We seek them for members of our family, our friends. We seek the truth for our community, that we can walk free and happy, for a world in peace, too. Now, I believe in the teachings of religious science, that we can find the way to achieve the results you need in your life. Now, I'm not saying this is the only way. I'm saying it is a good way. It is a logical and a practical and a spiritual way. In our world today, our ability to act unintelligently in a universe that is intelligent is amazing to me. The fears, the worries, the hurts, the killing, the wars. That which is not intelligent, functioning in our consciousness, naturally produces wrong decisions. As a result of these wrong decisions, we limit ourselves, and suddenly sickness, financial strain, family quarrels, frustrations, all of which are unnecessary, they appear. Now, the power to make right decisions is yours, and really it's a necessity. We observe the universe, the cosmos, nature, governed by an intelligence, an intelligence left to its own device, which acts and reacts intelligently. The seed grows, the wheat grows, yes. Intelligently. In scientific research, we find cause in creation by checking the creative process as it functions in a framework of intelligence known as law and order. When it finds the answer, it is shared with all, and all can use it as they so choose. And that is the principle of mathematics, physics, language, whatever it might be. Now, this same creative process is individualized in you and is represented by your capacity to make right decisions. And they're so essential. Now, we believe in a divine intelligence. We believe in an infinite mind that cannot act unintelligently. God is perfect wisdom, the architect of this universe, perfect. 
Now the cosmos would not be the visibility of total idea, law and order, if the infant ever knew an instant of confusion. No, the tides are going to come right in on time. There's law and order in this universe, with the exception of our own consciousness, our own mind, where our minds, through thoughts and ideas and attitudes and experiences, get out of order, and then we suffer. Now, when we speak of cause, let us know cause is never indecisive, never disturbed, and never defeated. You can say, all right, I'm discouraged, and it permits you to be discouraged. It's not being defeated. You're discouraged. It continues to act intelligently as law and order, no matter what we do with our lives. Now, time and space forever remain the same as we move through them. Man might think, well, here's a tire ground. Um, wouldn't it be interesting if I made a square tire? That'd be stupid, wouldn't it? But the man is capable of doing it. And sometimes in our mind, we make such stupid decisions. There's no question about it. We say, why did I do that? That was ridiculous. Well, we may be limited by the things we do, but this universe is not limited. And you are not limited when you change your mind and act in accordance with a divine law, a divine intelligence. Now, this same divine intelligence created you. And any creation of an infinite intelligence would have to be intelligent. Also, the purpose, the plan, and the process of its coming into being would necessarily be intelligent. And that's why I say you are one for the universal intelligence, and all is possible unto you. Therefore, let us affirm that man is an intelligent result of an infinite architect, an infinite mind, acting with purpose in ways of intelligence to express itself as intelligence in a universe of intelligence. In other words, law and order are as inherent in man as they are in the universal scheme of things. We ask then, well, what went wrong if we were created in this realm of intelligence with the capacity to think intelligently, with the capacity to study from our mistakes and not repeat them? You see, everything we can see represents the continuous operation of a first cause, which is mind in action. Now, our mind is also a continuous operation of a first cause of mind in conscious action. Your mind is constantly in action. For instance, your conscious and your subconscious intelligence acting in and on the universal subconscious of the cosmos has total power for self-development, self-expression, and self-evolution. Now, there is the one God, one mind, one cause, one intelligence. And we individualize this if we so desire. That's why we study. Study, study, study. Practice, practice, practice. Seek, seek, seek. To bring ourselves into a relationship with an intelligence within ourselves that corresponds to an infinite intelligence that knows what to do and does it when we say, I believe. Now, Jesus taught that man is given the totality of mind for his use and for the distribution of his ideas into form. Now, bringing you right down to earth, why are we so troubled? Why do we worry? Why do we fear so much? Trouble results when an unintelligent idea is introduced into a field of intelligent activity. Now, you might be baking a cake, and you just reach up, and instead of sugar, you put in salt. Well, it's not a good cake, is it? And sometimes we do that through just a word spoken. An idea of fear, worry, stress comes into our mind. And that's what could have been good by giving attention by giving proper observation and care, would have been all right. You see, worry, fear, hate, resentment, prejudice represent unintelligent factors. In fact, I could list all of the negatives known to man 
But right here is the birth of the problem. Right where I stand, right where you stand. Now, worry is the hatching period during which a negative situation is produced in one's thought and appears in the experience as a problem. For instance, again, and I usually use this two or three times a year because Dr. Ernest Holmes loved this illustration. He used the illustration so many times of the hen sitting on her egg. Now, here is an automatic function of nature that is intelligent. The hen knows what to do even though she has never done it before. And while she sits on those eggs, she will not stand for any interruption, believe me. In fact, she takes her little idea, the egg, rolls them over at certain periods until they hatch. Now, we also take a hatching period. We'll sit on our worries, our negative thoughts. And believe me, we roll them over too. And they finally hatch for the negative experience that's unbelievable. Illness comes upon us, stress. And the more we think about our negative ideas, the closer they come to the end of that hatching period, and here they are in form. There is a universal mind that is impersonal, not knowing what it creates, yet knowing how to create it. You speak your word, and your word is prospered. Now, the healing power still remains secure. The healing power that you can use right now remains undisturbed, even by the unintelligent creation of your thoughts, which temporarily exists within us. Temporarily. Because, you see, we have the power to cast out that negative thought. Now, can you feel such a oneness of God within you, which represents total intelligence? Have you had that experience in meditation or prayer? Where you just you're you're really released and you know everything is all right. That you can declare, I am pure intelligence, always acting intelligently. Now you can say it. And you can believe it. You believe that you can attune yourself right now with a divine intelligence that can heal your body, your affairs, the environment. Well, you were born out of intelligence, as intelligence, and created to express intelligence. Worry, fear, hatred, tensions, and frustration are not our normal heritage. They were abnormal, unhealthy uses of the mind and emotions, which perhaps we've assumed at times to be necessary in our everyday life. We worry about this, we worry about that. And we think it's the right thing to do instead of speaking our word. Believing and let an intelligent power work on that and through a process, then that negative form vanishes. Of course, you might say, well, everyone I know worries. That doesn't prove it has to be so, does it? All the illness in the world cannot disprove that health exists. And all the grief and sorrow in the world does not prove joy to be abnormal. I sincerely believe that health, joy, security, love, and satisfying self-expression are the normal modes of living. It is interesting, the fact that you and every other living soul desires health, wealth, joy, respect, self-expression. And this indicates your possibility, because these desires are already within you. And if they were not within you, you could not seek them in your world of experience. There would not be the desire to proclaim a new word. Now, if these desires are within you, tell me, how did they get there? How did that desire get there to be loved and to love? How did that desire get there for you to become something in this thing called life? How did it get there? Well, mind individualizes these God-given potentials in your consciousness. Because only as you express these needs and believe that an action is taking place concerning the need are you expressing life intelligently. 
Now, there is pure intelligence within you, willing to always act intelligently, if you will act intelligently. If you can believe this without subconscious rejection, then you're on the pathway of happiness. But so many times we will speak something, even after our prayer, and immediately we will turn. Well, I just can't see how it will work out. It is one thing to say, God is where I am and all is well. But we must remember one cannot go beyond one's self-accepted image. What image do you have of yourself? It's self-accepted. No matter how much you make believe to others, no matter how you dress up, no matter how much you can gain in fame, you have this as a self-accepted image. In other words, as long as you underestimate yourself, then that's your self-created image, and you cannot be successful. Now, no person is stupid. Stupidity is only a misuse of intelligence in non-intelligent ways. Now, everyone, including you, is mind in action with a potential of greatness awaiting just the demand to come forth. To come forth. Now, Ernest, he used to close his eyes for a moment and he'd participate in an affirmation. And he would say, and I read this, there is one mind, one source, one cause. I am because this cause created me out of itself in order to express itself as me. This cause, being perfect mind, created me as perfect mind in action. God knows me as an intelligent instrument of great ideas. Therefore, I now know myself as the mind of God in expression. I'm alert. I am love, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge. Every idea I need is already within my consciousness, my being. And these ideas are now activated in my thought. And I'm fully aware of them. Henceforth, I shall make right decisions. Where I am, God is. And God speaks and acts through me. And you say, and so it is, and he believes it. Now, many of you are refuting this truth, perhaps, with the argument that you've done your best throughout the year. You have prayed, you've been kind, but still you recognize you've made wrong decisions. No one has ever done their best. The greatest creative minds, creating masterpieces in art, literature, music, the sciences, have never been satisfied with their work. They're always looking ahead to the more, the more, the more. And I think that proves this truth, that you should never judge yourself by what you have done. You know, too many people do that. They say, look what I have done, look at me. Well, only judge yourself in terms of what you will do. You turn to those desires of the heart and the mind and the soul. And they're coming true. You are not the past any longer. Can you believe that? You can bring the past and be disturbed and crunch yourself into nothingness practice. But still, you are not the past any longer. You are the present becoming the future. You are a potential of mind. And this mind only knows the now, this moment. What are you thinking? What are you declaring? Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow hasn't come. And remember this. This mind never sits in judgment of anyone. It keeps no record and knows only the goodness within you. It knows only the goodness. If God is good, therefore the goodness within you is that which is recognized. But you have to recognize the goodness of God's will and God's power and healing power. Ernest said something. He said this. Some of you have come with great problems. But did you know you are not now, nor never have been, the problem? 
Now, perhaps you understand that. I'm glad you do. Ernest used to say, do you understand that? And everyone would say, and he said, well, I don't. But it came to him. I'm going to repeat that. Some of you have come with great problems. But did you know you are not now, nor never have been, the problem? Why? You are the only person who sees the problem in order to activate the idea necessary to solve the problem. Now you have a problem. You're the only one that now can take a new idea. An idea greater than that problem. God is what I am. I speak the truth. God's intelligence is within me. And I'm using it now. My faith is strong. My belief is sure and true. All right? In other words, ideas in physical bodies solve problems. Now, mind and emotion are the essentials of life, and you are mind and emotion. You are never the thing or the situation. What are you? You are intelligent, capable of knowing the right idea at the right time to make the right decision. Forever, right ideas activate right decisions and cast out all negatives instantly. Now, just think of it. This is the necessity of making a correct decision. You can say, I am healed, but you have to realize this intelligence within you. It's working right now within your body, keeping you strong. Endeavoring to take care of that which you abuse. But it's there. Well, as a thinker, you know you determine your own experience. Usually we're trying to think of others. Sometimes we try to control their experience. I'm talking about your own individual experience. There is nothing to oppose you but your own subconscious patterns of inferiority, let's say, of frustration, of guilt, things that happened in the past. They're gone. God knows nothing about that. If God is perfect love, that's perfect, and there cannot be one single iota of the negation. Now, it's interesting to take a piece of paper sometime and make note of all your alibis and excuses. I had a person come to me, and I asked them to do that, because the person had really an excuse for everything. Now, the person didn't have any money. The person was ill. No one loved the person, all this. And I said, I wonder why. He says, well, I know why. I should write it down for him. You should have seen. It had nothing to do with itself. It was other people. This person was unfair. This man was unfaithful. It went on, no one cared. And so I said, these, these excuses, they're just alibi. Now let's come to the real thing, you. The real you. The tremendous you. The powerful you. Which demands the necessity, though, of a decision to be made in your life, I'm going to live. I'm going to take care of the illness. I'm going to take care of the insecurity. I'm going to love life. She did it, too. Now, certainly, the times we feel lost. But that's just an idea. No one is lost. If we will throw out all of our alibis and excuses why we're unhappy, then we're free. Now, I am sure we are aware that we, through choice, through decision, have created the form we present to ourselves, the form we represent, the form we represent to our family, our children, our neighbors, our friends, through choice. Now, we have the privilege of observing our own self-creation. My, what a discovery it is. And we can, through mental treatment, through prayer, gradually whittle away all those deep-rooted negative patterns failure pattern, and replace them with a new self-acceptance, a concept, a new concept, which will cause us to be the self we were meant to be. 
happy, understanding. The weakness of others doesn't disturb us. We'll bless them and give them strength. The words of another, the curse of another doesn't affect us. It causes us to bless them because they have problems. Intelligence created you and set you free upon a pathway of self-discovery and self-decision. Now, in AA, the 12 steps, they're not going to help anyone unless they want help. And therefore, they're called upon. I need help. Now, how many times in prayer have we said, I need help, and forgiven ourselves, forgiven ourselves for many of the things that we've done, because this is a new moment. And why not forgive yourself if God doesn't do anything about it while you're perfect right now to find that perfection? And it doesn't make you arrogant. But there is a perfect, perfect life within me. Working on my body right now, it also awaits the decisions that I make in mind and fulfills those decisions. If I want to be discouraged, okay, here it is. If you want to feel lost, you can be just like in a desert in the middle of the city. You're just lost. Why? Because you said so. That was your decision. Some people will say, I'll never get well. And here's their alibi. How can I get well because of this condition? The whole family is sick. Everyone I know is sick. Well, people... We're characters, aren't we? Oh, the tremendous discovery, though, that you can make within yourself, by yourself, and through yourself, but for yourself. You see, most people make the decision to take their problem and hug it. Really, just, this is my problem. They dare me to do anything about it. They really do. Well, what's this person doing hugging the problem? He's rethinking it. He's refeeling it. He's retelling it. Oh, my. People that keep retelling their trouble. Over the phone and by letter. You do that? Somebody back here doing it. Now, <laughs> sure, we rethink them. In, instead of just thinking of something else and feeling something else. New ideas are essential now for the mind as food and water for the physical body. New ideas. Observe something new. Now, you can stand where you are amidst the decisions of the past. But remember, you need new ideas, new motivations, and new horizons of accomplishment. Believe me, I need them as much as you. Life has already given them to us, the divine graces, through the unfinished business of infinite mind, the unfinished business of, of a happy day, when it could be happy, but it's unfinished. Well, it's like a house without a roof. So many are seeking just the material in their lives. That just comes automatically. But it demands a new idea. Now, right now, take one problem you want to solve. But make certain that you really want to get rid of that problem. Some people just love to have the problem. They wouldn't know what else to talk about. When there's so much to talk about that's wonderful. And affirm this problem cannot continue in your life. That your decision is final. How do you think? Malignancies and many other things are arrested. And they have been arrested and are being arrested. Why? Because somewhere it took the necessity of decision, this problem cannot continue in my life, and my decision is final. And then you're one with the divine intelligence will at last believe. Mentally picture yourself as no longer one with that problem. And get the feeling the problem is gone and shall never, never return. Do this, in the Oh, let's be grateful. Let's turn from any problem. And let's declare it is not going to continue. Because we're going to think of something else. 
a healing Christ bears within. Oh, let's do it. And let's just give thanks. We have made a beautiful decision of Shola. For this we give thanks, and so it is. Amen.